Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover second type of problem on power optimization in VLSI designs. So friends, if you have not gone through the episode of low power VLSI design, I would recommend you please first go through that episode so that you would understand each and every aspects of power optimization technique in VLSI designs. So before we start this video, friends, I have a request to you. If you have not subscribed this channel so far, Please do subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you will get notified as soon as I upload a new video. So now without wasting much time, let's get started. So here we have given a problem. Basically, the circuit is given something like this. And we are asked to modify the given circuit for dynamic power optimization. And we are given a condition here that the adder is functional more frequently than shifter. That means here we have a max logic which selects either the adder output or the shifter output. And the waveform which describes the functionality of this circuit is this one. So here we have the input signal A, B and this is the selection line of the max. So if you see here, when the selection line is 0, that means it will select the adder output and when the selection line is 1, the max will select the shifter output so if you see here the add shift selection line is in starting it is high that means it has selected the shifter output and after one clock cycle the selection line goes to zero here that means now it will select the adder output and here again it is selecting the shifter output and after that it is always selecting the adder output it is not selecting the shifter output so here if you observe the input signal to both adder and shifter are basically toggling but for example during this time only the adder output is getting selected by the max and the shifter output is unused that means even though because of the activity or because of the toggling of the input signal of the shifter the shifter is performing the calculations but that result of the shifter is basically unused it is not used so what we can say is Whenever the shifter output is not used, let the shifter not perform any kind of processing. That means the input signal of the shifter should be static and there should not be any toggling in order to minimize the power consumption and more specifically the dynamic power consumption. And here basically based on this selection line of the MUX, we can say that whenever the shifter is not used, or the shifter output is not used, let the input of the shifter be static or we can minimize the toggling of the inputs of the shifters, there will be a significantly power reduction in the overall circuit. So guys, now let's see the solution. So here our idea is basically to reduce the toggling or to minimize the toggling of these input signal whenever the shifter output is not used. The input at the shifter should not toggle so that the activity of the shifter will be reduced and hence the reduced dynamic power. So friends, you can pause here this video and think of any kind of solution. If you are able to think any kind of solutions, please write down in the comment sections or I will explain you the solution in some next slides. So now let's discuss the solution. So friends, if we modify the original circuit like this. Now let's see if this circuit is going to work for the power reduction. So here what we are doing is we have introduced two additional AND gates. And the input of the AND gates is the two input signal which are going to the adder and shifter. And the other input of the AND gate is nothing but the selection line. So that means here when the selection line is zero, the output of these AND gates are going to be always zero. Even though the real inputs which are A and B are toggling, the output of these AND gates are going to be zero and hence the switching of these inputs at the shifter level input is not happening. That means there will be a reduction of switching power in the shifter. So friends, if you analyze the circuit behavior through the waveform, after 
adding these extra AND gates, it will look like this. So these are the real input A and B and this is the selection line. So if you see here, whenever the selection line is high, that means our shifter output is going to be used. That means our shifter, whatever the input, the real input, those inputs should be there at the output of the AND gates. So here if you see, the input is basically going at the output of the AND gate. But whenever the shifter or whenever the MUX is selecting the adder output and not the shifter output, that means this region, in this region, the output of the AND gate will be going to be zero, even though the input, the real inputs are toggling. And if you see here in this region, the selection line is zero, that means the shifter output is not used. And here, the output of the AND gates or in other words, the input of the shifter, the real inputs of the shifter are zero. Even though the actual input of the designs are toggling, the inputs which are the input signal which are going to the shifter are not toggling. That means the reduction of the power will be happening here because of the reduced activity in the shifter circuit. So friends, this solution is definitely going to solve the higher power consumption problem in this circuit. If you can think of any other kind of solutions, please write down in the comment section and I will revert you back as soon as possible. So one another important point here is in the previous interview question one, we applied a clock gating concept. But here what we are doing is we are basically getting the real data signals. So friends, this kind of implementation or this kind of solution, we can also refer as the data gate. Now let's see the trade-offs. So if you see here, we had to introduce additional two AND gates in order to get the data. So there will be extra area of two AND gates. And also because of these AND gates, there will be extra delay added in the timing paths. So, so suppose here it is a flip-flop and these inputs are also launched by some flip-flops. So this is a register to register path. So because of the additional AND gates here, the combinational logic delay is basically getting increased and that might cause any kind, some kind of violation. So the timing also we have to carefully analyze. And then the availability of the data at MUX. So if you see here, whenever the MUX selects the shifter output at that particular instant, the output at the real output at the at the shifter will not be available because as soon as the shifter goes high, the A and B signal will be passed to the shifter and then the shifter will start processing the data and it will take some time to produce the result and give it to the MUX. So there is a rest condition between this selection line, or basically we can say there is a rest condition between this MUX and the output of the shifter. So we have to make sure that the output is also available when the MUX selects the shifter output. So friends, these are the kind of trade-offs with this solution. I hope each and every point on this interview question is clear. If you have any doubts, please write down in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as I upload a next video. Thank you very much.